And welcome back to The Sim. So in this one, we're going to be talking about using the TCQA Throttle Quadrant with our awesome TBM 930. Now this is after Software Update 5 and some people were talking about how they were having trouble controlling the HBAR Throttle Quadrant in TBM now. So let's go ahead, jump into SPAD next, and talk about what we're using. We've got the TCQA, and we've mapped it in a way to leverage a lot of the advanced features of SPAD.next and the way you can map axes and controls. One of the things you want to look at first is there are so many cool things about the TCQA. It's got these virtual detent buttons, which we're actually going to leverage on this side as well as you have lower switches beyond the gate that you can also leverage. One of my favorite things is the fact that we can create our own axis ranges. So in the main range between where it hits the bottom stop, we actually use the throttle without reverser. And the reason for this is this is going to allow us to create our own dead zone between where the throttle is in idle when it goes into the reverse range and having control but also the fact that it goes back into flight idle if we use the throttle with reverser then it's really hard to dial it in and part of that just has to do with not having kind of a dead zone range where you can set an upper idle and then a reverse idle so kind of wanting to create your own dead zone we create that ourselves by having multiple axes. So as you can see here with the reverser, we were able to set it. So we actually have to get up and over the gate and get to this point before it starts going into our reverse thrust range. So that's really neat. We also then have it that here, right, our idle thrust we can go ahead and we can set that so that idle right is say here and so now what happens is you have that little bit of dead zone range and it means that as you come down it jumps in we come down here we go back up and so we're always in idle and of course we've got our toga button uh, map to the button on the side of the TQA. Highlight the TQA. You're going to find that adding event. You can set your custom axis, your standard axis, and then you've got your button pressed events, which is referring to the buttons on the side of the handles. Now where the magic comes in is where we come over to the second side. So here we don't have anything actually mapped to the axis we're leveraging the virtual buttons as we step through them to give us our different ranges. We also have to go ahead and put in some logic as to what it's supposed to do when it's at the top of this button. So this button event is going to create two different events based on the current state of the propeller position. When we move to the first or the top detent, it's going to set the throttle to 49.15. And this is an important value that we figured out. The lower detent will set throttle one to zero. Finally, when you come over the gate and drop it into the lower section, well, if the engine fuel valve is equal to one, then we're going to toggle fuel valve engine one, and that's actually going to shut it off. If engine fuel valve is zero, we're going to toggle the fuel valve and we're going to set the throttle event to zero. Now that we've gone through what we're doing, let's flip on over and with SPAD next open, let's visually see what's going on. What you're going to see when we move that throttle currently 
is of course the throttle moves up through the throttle range based on that throttle without reverser and then we have that intentional dead zone so while it's wiggling down here or while it's just in this area it's always in idle then we move this way and it's going to take us into the reverser we come back up and we're into that idle spot so we gave ourselves our own mechanical dead zone right here we could put an extra range inside of here and we're going to add an event and this will be a custom axis and we are going to do a range definition and we're going to do it from like just about here uh, whoops from there or wait no sorry I got to do that and then we'll go to there and from there to there and now we're going to rescale value throttle one axis set external I believe this will work uh, raw value so we're good there we're good there and so we've now created this third range and so always perfectly in that dead zone so that's cool all right so let's go ahead and let's jump over to this side to see what we did we're using the right control to help us with moving feathered side or the other side of the H so what you'll see is when we move this to here it moves over and when we pull out of there it moves to the high idle and so I wanted it in the detents so that we had all these controls um, for the behavior so it works great we can come over into the high we can go down into the low right so on that next detent you get the low so you can just go from here up to there up to there to bring it over come to here come all the way down now if we wanted to shut the engine down then we're going to pull up the flap the the gate flap and we're going to drop it into cutoff and same thing if we were to start the engine what's gonna happen is you're in the cutoff position uh, we want the starter to go on all right so there goes the starter and then we move it into that first detent there we go so we introduce the fuel we're in low idle and then as the props and temperatures and everything comes up then we go ahead and we move it into the high idle so basically here we're looking to see is the engine propeller level uh, less than zero so this data value is what we found that was doing some neat things so how do we come up with that well we went looking at data and so we looked for uh, propeller so we were looking for propeller lever one position and what you would see is when we move the position this is what we found was the weird intricacy of what was going on with the prop lever position so as soon as it goes to the other side it just propeller lever position you either had to be a hundred or you had to be minus 25 and then inside of here high and low these had no effect so you weren't riding the propeller to make it go up and down so for that right we looked at the throttle so we just looked at what was happening with um, the event monitor and so when this was running and we'll get rid of all these potentiometers you would see that those items were coming on and off as you moved it 
And so that told me, okay, I need to figure out this thrust toggle thing as well. And so we started looking at all those pieces. Uh, we brought him all the pieces in into the data monitor, uh, and then we figured it out. So it's when the throttle lever position is less than zero because it'd be minus 25. Well, we wanted the propeller reverse thrust toggle to happen. And so this is the, the propeller reverse toggle is what's actually moving this across. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we set the throttle in a weird way. So when it's less than 25, so when it's on this side and it hits that top switch, what happens here is you have to not only toggle it out of reverse mode, but you need to set the throttle to zero. Otherwise, it copies across the 4915 virtual throttle setting and you'll see your throttle bump up higher. So what we did was we made it that if the position, so we added an event when button pressed, if the propeller lever position is less than zero, then of course we're gonna send the uh, reverser thrust toggle event but we're also going to send throttle one set of zero. So it will put it to effectively idle. Then what we did is we've got it that if the propeller lever position is greater than zero, because it'll be a hundred, then what you want to do is you want to toggle it. So this will move it from the left side to the right side of the block. So this is going to move it from the uh, the left side of the block over to the right side, so the lower H. But at the same time that it's moving, you need to set the throttle position back up to 4915. Otherwise, it's going to drop further down on that side into the low idle. So this was a little trick that worked. We gave it a small delay so that basically in this time of the movement happening you don't see us swap out uh, the data value for the throttle so this throttle will now be set to 4915 and be on the other side so this is working perfect now when we come down to this position we're going to set the throttle to 49.15. So in a way, it does the exact same thing, but you would see the glitch happen, so it was much cooler to just have it happen there again. So that's your high idle. And that's helpful because then we've got low idle and high idle. So there's our low idle. So there, it's going to set the throttle to zero. So that was that whole point, because if we were to hit the toggle right now, even when we're in this low idle state, if you hit that toggle, it would jump across to idle. So it's kind of the throttle starts from zero, goes to 49.15, and then when you need to pull it across, it toggles out the propeller and drops the throttle back to zero. So we've now created all of that. And then if you're ready to shut down, you can simply just bring it over the gate. And we've got, again, another one of these checks. When this switch turns on, we wanna check that the engine fuel valve is a one. And so if the engine fuel valve is one, then we're gonna set it to zero. And basically that'll shut off the engine. If engine fuel valve is a one, or, or sorry, if engine fuel valve one is a zero, so we're doing a cold and dark startup. We're gonna toggle the fuel valve so that it opens up and we're gonna set the throttle to zero so that we will see the visual handle move from the cutoff to the low idle position. That's it. That's really all you have to do to map and control that throttle handle from the TCQA. Now, of course, 
There's lots of other switches. So there's your starter. You can have it send starter one held. Um, you can switch it off, which will set the parameter to zero. So when you're done with the starter, you can bring it back to here. I put the turbine ignition on the right hand side. Uh, nothing on that side and nothing to the current crank switch. With the add-on, nothing because there are no spoilers. Uh, we've got nothing currently on this guy. Of course, we got the gear up, gear down. And on the right-hand side, we've got our parking brake. We've got our rudder trim. And, of course, we've got our flaps with auto detent. Now, if you want a trick on the flaps, you're going to see that because these also have detents, what you can do is full up, set zero, go to the first one, which is because this has only got three um, stages, up, middle, down. So I actually came to the second stage and went just a little bit before it, and I set that for full down. And then that way I don't have to come to the halfway mark and then all the way down. I can have that feeling of of the individual clicks. Uh, of course, we can go ahead, we can publish this thing to the online snippets if you'd like. As always, to do that or to download it, click on a button or a knob, you hit that publish button, and away you go. So, TCQA, I'm going to do the complete device, and of course, only selected aircrafts and the reason for that is obviously this probably isn't going to make much sense outside of the TBM. So now that we've done that and we've published it, of course you've got access to it. If you like this, please hit that like button. If you think you want to see some more cool stuff with SPAD.next and Microsoft Flight Sim, hit the subscribe button so you get notified. And as always, Thanks for watching. Have a great day.